Hello, it's Duncan. Functional programmers like to label code as pure or impure, depending on whether it's referentially transparent. That's fine, but it's a bit abstract, a bit academic. I like the way that Eric Norman describes it, discriminating between actions and calculations. Actions are code that depends on when it's run. Calculations are all other code. If code that's otherwise a calculation calls an action, it becomes an action. Because of this, unless we fight against it, all our code will become actions, which is a shame because calculations are a lot easier to reason about, refactor, and test. In this episode, we'll look at how refactoring to distinguish actions and calculations can improve the design and testability of our code. Let's look in our list handler. There are two categories of code here. One depends on when it's run and the other doesn't. So let's look at the first statement here. We are invoking clock. Well, clock takes nothing and returns an instant and its job is to tell us the time. Obviously that depends on when we run it. This second expression, local date of instant, given now and a zone ID, that doesn't depend on when we run it. It does depend on the values of these parameters, now and the zone ID, but if we pass in a given time, it will always return the same local date. What about listing now? Well, listing now does depend on when we run it, not because now can change, but because what's on the disk can change. The point of this listing function is to take the current time and combine that with loading the stock from a stock file, decide whether to update it, and return the current stock list. And that current's important. It depends on what's on the disk at the moment. So we have here one piece of code that depends on when we run it, one that doesn't, and another that does. And then finally, this expression here doesn't depend on when we run it. For a given stock list returned from the listing, this will always return the same response. Now, a nice way to make sense of code is to make as much of it into calculations as possible. What we'll do is we'll pull this out into a variable. We'll call it stock list result. And now we have an interleaving. This is an action. This is a calculation. This is an action. And this is a calculation. But because there's no dependency between the two lines, we can move the result up one. Now we split this down the middle. This top bit is an action. It depends on when we run it. And this bottom bit is a calculation. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this bit into its own function. None of these changes should have broken the test, but let's just check. That's all good. So what we have here is a calculation for a given time and a zone ID and a stock list result and whether or not pricing is enabled, this will always return the same response. In contrast, the handler returns an action because it does depend on when we run it. It depends on A, the time that we run it, and B, it depends on what's on the disk when we list the stock. What we've done is we've separated out the fetching of the stock from the rendering of the stock. This response here is rendering. It's working out what the response should be given the stock. So let's call that render and reorganize the parameters so that the primary one is first. And now we can move the rendering out into its own file. So we make that public and then take the format and the renderer and the view, in fact, everything but the list handler. And we move them to a package of rendering and we'll call this the stock list rendering. Add that and check that it works. For some reason, IntelliJ hasn't brought an import with it. Try again. It doesn't work. And we have an internal server error. Let's just go and have a look in the logs. And that tells us ah, here the stock list view model wasn't found. Ah, that's this template file here that's loaded relative to the source file. So we need to move that as well. So move that into rendering and try again. Good. So now stock list rendering is a single function, which is a calculation. It doesn't depend on when it's run. It takes a stock list result and a time and a zone ID and produces a response. And the handler now that does the action bits. It does the bits that depend on when they're run. And then it passes it to this pure function, this render. 
What does that do for us? Well, it simplifies list handler a lot. We can see what it's doing and which bits depend on when they're run. But another key advantage of calculations is testing. Let's look at where we test the rendering. Here's our list stock tests. And because we were testing through the handler, remember we were having to create an app and then the fixture was having to write into the file system in order that the app could read. And we were having to fix the time because that was being passed into the handler. Then we render through the roots and approval test the resulting HTML. I'm going to take that code and use it as the basis for a rendering test. There and get rid of that. And we want that to be in rendering. Right, let's run this. And it will fail because we haven't approved stock list rendering tests list stock. We can approve that and run. Okay, now let's see how much less setup we can do with. So instead of creating an app and a fixture and so on, we already have a stock list here. And we know we have this function render. That takes a stock list result. Well, that would be success of this stock list. What else do we need to render it? We needed time. Well, that would be the time that we were using from the fixture. And zone ID, we know we use London for that, which we probably have to make public somewhere. Let's go and find it. Oh, it's here. I think maybe we'll make that public and put it up into the app as a thing that we might reasonably parameterize later. That means we can import that. And now finally, is the pricing enabled? The answer is no in this case. And that result should be the same as we've just approved. Let's find out. It is. Let's add the parameter names to these. Now that we have and things are so much simpler, we can see that we had this nonsense that we have a stock list that was last modified in 2022, which apparently we're rendering in 2021. As it happens, this last modified doesn't end up in our output. And because we're simply doing a calculation here, we know it can't affect whether the stock list is being updated. So in fact, we could use any time in there. I think maybe we'll pull that out, call it any time and make it instant now just to prove it. Maybe sometime is a better name and check that passes. Good. Just to check we're not cheating, what we'll do is we will compare the stock list rendering test list stock with the list stock test list stock. And they're identical. So we're doing the same thing. Let's go back to the list stock test and look at the rendering of pricing. So we really have to jump through hoops here to see how we render pricing. We have to set up an app. We have to set up a fake sort of pricing service. We have to write a file that could be read. We know the two will be merged and we'll get this file out. So we do the same thing. We'll take this and put it into our stock list rendering tests and run it and approve that to give us a baseline. Now though, instead of having to set up all the conditions so that the app reads a particular stock list and then sets up the pricing, we can just create a stock list. So let's go and get this and put it in here. And we can just add the prices to our items. So this is copy and that's a price of a hundred. And you may remember that our pricing is actually a result so that we remember whether we had any problems. So that will be success of price hundred. This one, the second item has a simulated failure. So in that case, instead of having to do that, we can just copy it with a price, which is failure, some error, which is an exception. So we can just create a runtime exception in here with a simulated failure to remind us. And then finally, the last item has a null price. And I think that's actually success with null, which is say we looked it up, we didn't get an error, but we didn't get a price. Okay. So that's what we expect the effect of all this setup before to be. So now we should just be able to render that directly and check that it is as it was last time. And find out by running the tests. That fails to keep us on our toes. Let's just find out why. We're not showing the price. 
And that's because we forgot to change this flag. Let's try again. Great. Returning to our list stop tests. Down the bottom we have reports errors. We can do the same thing again. Run. Approve. Run again. Now, instead of having to corrupt the stock file underneath our app when it started, we can just render failure to load a stock list with an error like blank name. See whether we're right. And in this case, it probably we set pricing enabled to false. There we go. And now we can return to the top of this and just tidy up, I think, by moving this stock list into the one test that it's used in. And run. Returning to the list stock test, which is really our acceptance test, you see that this reports errors does another thing as well, which is it shows that we raise an event with the error. That's quite important because it shows that the app is wired up properly, but we can rely on the stock list rendering tests to check the rendering. So we could take this out of here and get rid of our approver. And that would be reports errors that we can delete. We'll run all our tests. Oh, they fail. Why is that? List is empty. We don't have any events. Oh, we don't have any events because we still need to actually make the request. So maybe what we should do is say, assert that getting on our routes has status internal server error. Run that. Good. Now looking up this file, we're checking that we update here and that we don't update here depending on the days. And we're checking by looking in the HTML output. That's really quite a fragile way of doing things because if we change the way that we render, then these tests will fail despite the fact that the updating will be working. We'll have a look at fixing that later on. And the same is true of list stock sing file updates. However, the pricing enabled, I think we can get rid of. And then we're left with list stock here. I think we should probably keep this one despite the fact there is an overlap with the stock list rendering tests. And the reason for that is that this is our smoke test. This shows that everything is wired up well enough that we can read and render. And our rendering tests don't really tell us anything about the wiring. So we'll leave that one alone for now, I think. So let's have a look at what we've done. Well, fundamentally, we split this listing into two parts. We split it into the getting the results, the thing that depends on the time, and the rendering, the thing that's just a calculation. That meant that we could move all of our rendering out and we could test it separately. It made the testing a lot easier. I think I'm going to commit that with split out list rendering. Whilst I like starting with acceptance tests, I do find that sometimes once you've solved the problems of getting acceptance tests to run, it's very easy to fall into the trap of testing everything through the acceptance test. And that way we get tests that are slow to run and complicated to set up, concentrating on separating concerns and especially making things into calculations that are simple to test delivers on the promise of TDD, which is that if we listen to the tests, they will show us how the code wants to be structured. I think there are still some of our acceptance tests that are trying to talk to us, so we'll have a chat with those next episode. If you'd like to see that episode, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to learn more about actions and calculations, you should check out the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, and in particular, chapter seven, which is called Actions to Calculations. Thanks for watching.